Hello, I'm Phil Archer from GS1 Global Office, and I'd like to tell you just a little bit about GS1 Digital Link, one layer at a time. Now, any conversation about Digital Link is likely to include some really weird terms like URIs and link types and URLs and resolvers. GS1 Digital Link is not about the technology. GS1 Digital Link is about traceability, it's about product recalls, it's about consumer information, back of store operations, providing information to clinicians and patients, it's about online shopping and search engine optimization and customer analytics, it's about warehousing operations, it's about the rail industry, the construction industry, engineering, it's a little bit about augmented reality and a lot about apparel. GS1 Digital Link is about GS1. It's about the things that we spend our time helping businesses with all the time. Now, some of the detail of GS1 Digital Link is actually really obvious. You may not think of it in that way, but it's pretty obvious. Because all we're doing, finally, all we're doing is we've taken a barcode and we're sticking it on the end of a URL. And that's almost, almost it. But that change is profound because we've gone from a simple way of conveying one number to now a Swiss army knife of opportunity because that barcode can link to your product information for consumers. It can link to your back of store operations. It can link to information for clinicians and regulators. It can link to information for patients. It can link to instruction manuals in any language, promotional videos, coupons. It can do all those things because the barcode is connected to the web. Now, if we try and cover the whole of Digital Link, it's a, there's just so much of it and it quickly blows people's minds. So we're going to take it one layer at a time. Let's start with the foundation. We call this the GS1 Digital Link URI syntax. All that means is there's a very definite structure to the way that you put the identifier into a URL. This is a simple case with a GTIN. It could be a serialized shipping code. It could be a GLN, whatever it may be. And we can extend that. Here's an example that has a GTIN, a batch number, a serial number, and an expiry date. That would traditionally be encoded in what we call element syntax. Exactly the same information exactly the same information can also be put into a URL. And you can encode that syntax in a QR code, in a data matrix. The, the, the syntax is independent of the data carrier. So it's a way of putting those identifiers into the URL, but the domain name doesn't matter. The domain name is simply where you are looking things up. The identifier is the important bit, and that's always been the case. Those are the GS1 identifiers. Now, the second layer is the link types. That's a little bit easier to uh, get your head around. I always use the example of newspapers for this. Here are two online newspapers, one from the UK, one from Argentina. And if you look at the, the navigation uh, pane, the things you can go and have a look at, they're the same. You've got a latest news section, a sports section, a TV section, politics, opinion. That's basically the same set of links on every newspaper in every language all over the world. Now translate that to the kind of things that GS1 cares about, products, shipments, items. You can think of exactly the same list of things that you want to know about. Where's the consumer information? Where's the master data? Where's the recall status API? Where's the information about, has about handling hazardous material? Information for clinicians, information for patients. So it's that sort of menu of options, and we call those the link types. But how are you going to make use of that? That theory that, hang on, this thing that's got a GS1 identifier, now it also has an identity on the web, and I get the idea of a menu of options, these link type things. How does that actually work? How do you make that real so that you can build services that make use of it and put that information in the hand of your business partners and your consumers? To do that, you need a thing called a resolver. Now, again, we're working in layers. 
You don't have to get this high up the stack. You can use a digital link URI in a barcode without a resolver. You don't have to have a resolver, but that does limit you a little bit because without a resolver, you can only add the link to one thing at a time. You can take that digital link and you can redirect it to one thing. Now you can update that anytime and redirect to another thing, that's okay, but it's always either one or the other. With a resolver, you can link to lots of things all at once. You actually create that menu of options that can be followed, and it's also machine readable. Now, we at GS1 Global Office, we actually operate two resolvers. One is a production grade system that you could potentially rely on in your business processes. It has all sorts of policies around it and guarantees of performance. And there's another one which is available for you to run experiments and test things out and developers can use and put in any old rubbish and see how it works. So there are two resolvers and of course you get more information about those from your local GS1 member organization. Moving up the stack, we then get to applications that use all this stuff. So here's a complete list of all the apps that GS1 Global Office makes available. We don't. All right, there's one little demo app from some years ago, but basically we don't make apps because that's up to you. You know what you want to do. It's up to you to put your tools in front of your members of staff or your brand in front of your consumers, whatever it may be. So that really is up to you, but we don't leave you on your own. We've got a friend here. This is the Octocat. Now, you may or may not be familiar with the Octocat, but I promise you, every developer in the world knows the Octocat. Because the Octocat is the logo of a thing called GitHub, which is the service through which a great deal of the world's open source software is made available, including all the toolkits available for GS1 Digital Link, the resolver code, it's all there available on an open license that you can take and use to either create a new app or uh, extend the functionality of an existing one. So check out the Octocat, that is the GitHub um, repositories of uh, GS1, which will help you build applications. The final layer is, uh, all right, I admit it's a little bit geeky, a little bit techy. It's called linked data. Now, why does that matter? Well, I, I mentioned that GS1 Digital Link is about online shopping and back of store operations and clinical information, which gives you an idea that you're connected to lots of different sources of information, images, videos, all sorts of stuff that you can get. But actually, no, you're not. You are not connected to the internet and nor am I. We can't because we're human beings. You use a computer to connect to the internet. And so you have to make those links available in a way that the computer can understand. And that's what linked data does. That's a very quick run through the whole stack. Each one could be talked about in more detail. There is more to it. Your local GS1 member organization can tell you more, or you can contact me directly if you want any more information about GS1 Digital Link, one layer at a time. It really is the global language of business.